Hi everyone, it's Friday. Welcome to Mom Talks. Hopefully everybody had a really fun Halloween last night. I know I did. Uh, we took the girls out trick-or-treating and had a great time for about 20 minutes. <laughs> and so we're going to be continuing our discussion today about fall woes. And uh, we're going to be talking today about fall allergies. I'm joined with Dr. Catherine Rivera, who's going to be talking about uh, different fall allergens and what's going on with symptoms and why they're so miserable and how we can get our kiddos feeling better. So Catherine, thanks for being here with us. Yes, thank you for inviting me. So for starters, I think People, people know what allergies look like, but they might not know what an allergy is. So can you explain a little bit about what's going on in your body that causes allergies? So an allergy is your body's reaction to a substance. So that your immune system reacts to it by um, producing antibodies. And then specifically in terms of allergies, we're talking about one called IgE. And then IgE circulates all around the body, producing an inflammatory cascade and releasing all these inflammatory mediators that cause the symptoms that you normally are, uh, see with the, the allergies. So let's talk about, just for you know anybody who might be curious, uh, what are those typical textbook allergy symptoms? So when we talk about allergies, we typically talk about allergic rhinitis mm -hmm. or allergic conjunctivitis. And um, those are runny nose, um, congestion, sneezing. You can have eye symptoms like eye itching, runny eyes, red eyes. Some kids also can develop hives or skin mm -hmm. itching. We just want to remind you that we are taking questions during the episode. So if you have questions about symptoms, treatment, please write them down in the comment section and we will get to them through the episode. So let's talk a little bit about this time of year. Everybody talks about fall allergies, the fall being such a terrible time for allergies. Why is that? So it used to be called hay fever um, because in the past that, that was a term that was used to it because it was at the end kind of a during harvest season. Sure. But, um, but it has nothing to do with hay. Actually, it's ragweed. Oh, okay. So ragweed starts to pollinate at late August. That's why you know kids have symptoms when they start going back to school and they call it the back to school epidemic. So late August, and then it continues until the first hard freeze. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, people love this Indian summer kind of thing, but actually yeah. the weather, the, the warm weather, the high humidity, the windy weather, it actually um, promotes the continuation of the pollen spreading. Yeah, I, I think my husband hasn't stopped sneezing for a couple of months. So let's talk about, you said ragweed, what are some other really common allergens that are present here in the fall? Mold is another one. Mm -hmm. Mold loves the warm um, and, hu and hu warmth and humidity, um, so Gross. it thrives in that <laughs> environment. And also because it's colder, and well, first of all, kids go back to school. So when yeah. they go back to school, they're supposed to class pets. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes at the school, there's um, a cockroach, dust mite allergen, mm -hmm. and or even mouse because it's places where there's food. Um, and also they're more indoors, so they can be exposed more to their indoor home allergens as well. So those are the things that most commonly you see during the fall season. Okay, so I think that a lot of parents sometimes have trouble discerning, especially when their kids are younger. Um, is my kid allergic to something or does my kid just have a cold? How do you tell the difference? And that's hard to tell. Um, it's even hard for me to tell but with my yeah. own children that have allergies. I think that um, I, I think that if you have symptoms that are sneezing, constant sneezing, but your child doesn't look otherwise ill, there's not associated with fever, things like that, it's sometimes a little bit easier to tell. But a cold also will have congestion and runny nose and sometimes a mild cough. And sometimes it's not easy to tell. So mm -hmm. when in doubt, just go and talk to your pediatrician because then your child can be allergy tested or you can use allergy medications and see if it helps okay. to, make, to kind of tease it out. So let's talk a little bit about um, just you kind of discover your child has an allergy it's just kind of a simple run-of-the-mill allergy um how do you treat that at home uh, without needing to come here into the hospital and get specialized treatment well the first one is to use the allergy medication so the, the common allergy medications are antihistamines those are the best uh, a lot of people like benadryl but mm -hmm. we don't recommend benadryl because benadryl has significant side effects and it can make your child very sleepy yeah um so we recommend antihistamines like uh, loratadine or mm -hmm. cetirizine. They're all over the counter and they work great. Mm -hmm. um, and they're approved for, for young children as, as well as adults. So those work great. Then you can also take care of things around the house. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you know that you're allergic to pollen and then pollen is a big component of your allergies, so there's some things that will make those worse. 
raking leaves. Yeah. You, as soon as you start raking leaves, the pollen, you're moving the pollen, mm -hmm. and you're actually moving mold as well. So, because there's mold and ragweed pollen in those leaves. So that's one thing that, and then open in them, that's also another one. If you're going to play outside and you're going to come in the house, what we recommend is to take off your shoes. So don't bring the pollen into your home. Take off your shoes, um, change your clothes, maybe take a shower, wash the yeah. hair, get rid of the pollen that's, that's on you. And then another thing is to close windows. Mm -hmm. I know we like to, once the weather starts and getting cold, air. we like to open the doors and the windows and we like that air. But if you have allergies, that's the worst. So close the doors of your uh, house and close the doors of your car because mm -hmm. then the pollen can get into your car as well. And then other things, if, if it's mold in your home, just make sure that your home is um, doesn't have um, like leaky faucets mm -hmm. or um, water in the basement. Anywhere that there's the collection of water, um, there could be mold, like the bathroom, the the kitchen, also the basement. And if there is mold and you can see it, just make sure you scrub it mm -hmm. and that it dries completely. Um, and then you keep your uh, humidity in your house low. Mm -hmm. um, some people recommend less than 60% in the home if you can control the humidity. Um, and then sometimes even use dehumidifiers if you have a very humid home. So there's a difference between just a standard run-of-the-mill allergy and having a more severe allergy. At what point would you recommend parents rec coming in to see you at St. Louis Children's Hospital? So you, parents should seek advice when your allergies are not controlled with antihistamines, so the, mm -hmm. the, the allergy medications, and are significantly impairing the child's life. So if you have allergies, you're miserable. Anybody has, yeah. has, has, had, has had allergies is miserable. You can't sleep well because you're congested, you're itching. If you can't sleep well, the next day you're not gonna function well at school. Yeah. If you're using too much medication, sometimes those medications can also affect you. Um, affect your school performance. So the kids won't do well at school. They will get, because it, it can be associated with anxiety. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you don't allow your child to go play outside or go jump in the leaves like all the other children, then that child may have a little bit more depression yeah. because they can't go outside. You're not allowing them to play and participate in the things that they want to. So um, it, it can significantly alter your life and, um, and limit. So when, when things are severe, then you should see an allergist because there's more things that can be done that maybe you don't know about. So what kinds of things could be done outside of a standard allergy test? So um, they can add a nasal, nasal sprays or nasal medications, and there's different types of nasal medications that we can add. Um, there's also, also different types of other oral medications that they can take, and also allergy shots, which okay. work well for a lot of children. So. Mm -hmm. And that's something that kind of is elevated to where they really need to seek care here before you know first so. yeah you can you have to see an allergy for Absolutely. that you can't just get it you just can't get, yeah you can't just get the shot without no talking, without talking to you no, first that's right so let's talk a little bit about um allergies are can allergies ever really be a, a very serious health concern for your child so allergic rhinitis can be a health concern when it it's affecting your life and affecting school performance um also in children that have asthma it can trigger their asthma mm -hmm. um and then if it, it if the allergy triggers a severe reaction, a severe bronchospasm, then that can be seriously life limit, like seriously um, concerning yeah, for the parent. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about other types of allergies, like food allergies, sure. those can be life threatening and very serious. Mm -hmm. So it depends on, but allergic rhinitis by itself is just, it's because of all the morbidity that is associated with it. So where do parents get started if they're thinking about seeking more care? Should they start with you? Should they start with pediatrician? Allergy testing, where should they start? They, I always recommend to start with your pediatrician because your mm -hmm. pediatrician is going to be able to give you um, advice and to also tease it out, like see, is, is it an infection or is yeah. it an allergy? And then your pediatrician can start with the, like the basic allergy care and treatment. Mm -hmm. And then if you're at maximal therapy of what the pediatrician can do, then the pediatrician can refer you to an allergist. Um, we can also you can also come to the allergies at any time yeah. uh, without going to the pediatrician. But we also we always recommend going to the pediatrician first. Okay, Catherine, thank you so much for being here again today. That is going to wrap us up today here on Mom Talks. Hope you'll join us next week. We're going to be talking to one of our pharmacy specialists about uh, medication for your child. Uh, we're getting into cold and flu season. We want to ease our child's symptoms, but oh my goodness, sometimes, especially with littles, it is so hard to know, is this the correct dosage? Am I doing this right? Am I administering it right? Is it too much? Is it too little? Is it doing anything? 
Tylenol, ibuprofen, which is better? So we're going to be diving into all of that next week, 11 o'clock, uh, next Friday, and we hope to see you there. Have a good day.